you know, no matter how you slice it, I guess if you're looking for a real estate therapist or somebody else to listen, well, then you, I guess you, at least you know what you're looking for, right? I mean, sometimes it's hard to know the answer, the outcome of the end, the, the end of the transaction, how it's all going to look. But at least on the front end, you, you think, I guess, you know, uh, you know who you're looking for. I'm Ben Brash, and welcome back to Brashonomics. Eric B. joins us, uh, owner and founder of Seattle Real Estate Investing, LLC. And, I mean, Eric, well, first of all, welcome. How are you doing? Thank you. Yeah, good. Doing good here. Good. Well, you know, it's great to have you. And it sounds like one of your key elements is actually, well, first of all, you're no, you don't call yourself a real estate therapist. Why don't we get this out of the way? Yeah, I was using the word uh, real estate counselor. And, so, and why is that? I mean, counselors listen. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, that has that's pretty much a big trick to my game is just really sitting down and, and being that counselor. You know, when I'm talking to a seller and, and the big part of my business is, is talking with sellers. And it always comes down to making everybody feel comfortable and then listening. Because what you guys were saying before about they tell you how to sell them, you know, or what, what they need in order for you to provide the, the solution. And so we're, we come in and we're trying our, my goal is to provide the best solution for the, for the client, for the seller. So that has a lot to do with listening, sitting down, being comfortable and, and, uh, negotiating which way makes the most sense. You know, I, I think that when you say you sit down and you listen in order to sell them, I, I don't, it, it sounds bad, I think on the front end, but the reality is, is you're actually, trying to help them come to the conclusion they don't know they want yet yeah or maybe they they know what they want it's just making getting that conversation to go that route you know because if i'm trying to go down a route that that i'm comfortable with or makes sense for me logically and they're coming from a different direction it just we we don't get anywhere right so, so how do you help sellers then i mean you start with listening and, and you guys seem to have a lot of options once you kind of get an idea of what's important to them it sounds like exactly so at seattle real estate investing.com we we just have um we consider ourselves a real estate solutions company so we come in we market to sellers and these sellers will have uh, various different motivations and when when we take in a lead and we decide that it's worth an appointment we go down and sit with them and and uh, then we 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 listen. That's a big part of it. And and they tell us their story, whether it's a a divorce or a probate or you know the their moving job transfer. I mean, it comes from all different uh, motivations. And and once we do that, we we talk about the current market. What are they competing against? Is is a listing a best option? Is uh, are they aware that they're in short sale and or a short sales could be a, a good option for them? And we so there's a whole education period. And we also offer a cash price. So that will, a cash price has no contingency and it's, we can close within a really short or custom timeline. So uh, we kind of lay out all the different options and, and we it's figure It's kind of the ace in the hole, isn't it? I mean, most, totally. most people aren't going in thinking, well, and he might buy it. Right, exactly. And, and so having that option on the table, especially when a lot of these sellers, they have bad roofs, they have cracked foundation, they have all these different problems where even listing it, if that was an option, really the reality of the situation is that they're going to have to put money into the property just to list it. And so that's just, you strikes that right off the table. And so now we're, okay, well, let's, let's talk about a cash offer. Cause I, I buy and, and fix these types of homes. And, and at that point I'm whipping out my credibility package and showing them, you know, the type of business we do. So, okay. Somebody thinks about selling their house. You have they have all these options. I mean, you talked about whether you guys buy it. Um, you talked about actually rehabbing it for them. In mm -hmm. fact, you called it, and I want you to elaborate if you can. Residential redevelopment. Right. So, um, what most people uh, from when watching A and E, he's flipped this house or something. You know, when people buy and sell real estate, buy, fix, and sell real estate, it, it coined the phrase "flipping a house," and exactly. I mean, that's really what we're doing. However, uh, we like to call it residential redevelopment because that's really that's a better way of saying flipping a house. And because we're adding value to a neighborhood every time we buy a house, because we come in there, it's usually the ugliest one on the block. And by the six months or three months later, by the time we get done with it, it's the nicest house on the block. And so I, I don't think you're going to get a TV show calling residential redevelopment, though. No, it's not quite as catchy. Yeah, absolutely not. And that's definitely not our goal. So we're good. <laughs> Um, okay, so residential redevelopment, you go in, you are essentially flipping for people who, who know that term. Um, and, and it sounds like you guys have 
a pool of people who are already ready to kind of go in at this type of venture. And that's really what this buying almost instantly means. Exactly. So uh, our website has produced a really strong buyers list. So we kind of became a hub for other people to come to us that are looking for these types of properties, something that they can buy, fix, and then sell. And so we have developed a really strong buyers list. And so sometimes when our marketing's going on and we have multiple projects going at a time, we can't always keep closing on more projects. It's, you know, money is not available or whatever. There's a variety of different reasons. And so what we'll do is we can sell that contract off to another buyer so or assign that contract off to another buyer from our list. And so that's what we call wholesaling. So what makes a good investment then? You say you have people kind of lined up at the door. Mm-hmm. Um, your website has generated a lot of these people. What do you, what makes a good investment in terms of the properties that are really worth acquiring and rehabbing? Because I think a lot of people want to, you know, a lot of people think, well, I probably need to sell my house. And I think a lot of people think because they've watched flip, flip the house or whatever it is on, on whatever station it is, uh, on a and E, I I think you said, but I think because people have seen that it's, well, now I know how to do it. Right. And, and then people pay too much for property, try to fix it, try to sell it. And they're you know, it just is a big disaster uh, right from the start. And so what makes a good property worth buying is the price. Every, you know, it has to be bought right. It has to, you have, you can't pay too much for a property. And if you buy it correctly and you follow through the, your system as far as rehabbing it and doing the right improvements to the property, then selling it for a profit is, is a great strategy. So, um, yeah. yeah, And, and here in Seattle market is a really strong market. And so we really focus in on, the 200 to 400 uh, sales price at the end of the project. So, uh, and really catering to the first time home buyer. So we'll take an ugly home that has, you know, 1970s, everything throughout the house. And we'll just bring it right up to today's spec standards, you know, white six panel doors, white trim, you know, just, just as if you were to walk through a new construction home and a tile in the bathrooms and this type of feel. And so we can do that cost effectively and it just, again, it, it, it blows the doors off all the buyers. Well, again, we're here with Eric B., owner and founder of Seattle Real Estate Investing, LLC. So when you start looking at those properties, and we just have about a minute left before we have to go to break, is there any like key things you look at in a property to make sure it's a good, a good house to purchase for that type of investment? Yeah, I always want to buy properties that are not on busy arterials and, and just the the standard criteria like that, not across the street from a gas station, all this, because we're always looking at the the end exit, which is ultimately selling it. So um, if it's a, a in a good, quote unquote, good neighborhood um, that's selling. And so we're always, again, looking at the exit. So how is that market particularly moving at that moment? Uh, if it's a strong market in a good neighborhood, then then we'll buy the ugliest one all day long. So, so it, uh, it com- comes down to location. Location always in real estate. And, and again, the exit. The, the very end exit is, is how we approach every property. Great. Well, Eric, thanks so much for joining us again. Eric B., the residential real estate counselor. There you go. There you go with Seattle Real Estate Investing, LLC. We have to go to break, but when we come back, Ryan Leopold's going to join us. If you're thinking about buying a house, what can you do to improve your chances of getting your offer accepted? We'll tell you from the lending side when we come back. 